church. Are you all able to hear me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you all happy? Blessed? I missed the men outing, but praise God. I want to join next year because they said next year they're not bringing the boat. They're going to walk on the water, so I'll join them for sure next year. From the boat to the water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But so good to see you all this morning in the house of the Lord. So blessed to be part of this house here and what God is doing. You know, Miss is amazing. And as I was um, preparing, you know, I was thinking of uh, so many things. A devotion that uh, my wife and we were reading. Uh, one quote, I'm just uh, trying to put it together. I did not have it with me, but it just came to my mind. When you are in the university of faith, only your insecurities, only through the insecurities, God is going to make use of the education of faith. When you are in the university of faith, the only way you feel you top the class is God is going to use all the insecurities to see what he wants to do in your life, why he did what he did, why you are at a place where you are right now, and what is going to happen, you know, when you come out of those insecurities. Now, there are so many insecurities we deal with. It's not just one, right? There are so many insecurities we deal with. And I want to encourage this morning from this beautiful story that we read from 1 Kings chapter 17. You, know, you have three wonderful miracles that happen in this story. So I'm going to take my time here. And I want to elaborate and help us understand that if we are going through insecurities, if we are at a place of test and trials, and we face something and, you know, we are very quick to make a conclusion, man, that is wrong. What he did was wrong. What she did was wrong. Or what he said was wrong. But this morning, the Word of God is going to remind us absolutely something different, that, you know, there is a matter... And everything that is happening, there is a matter involved in your miracle. While I was meditating on this, so many things like, you know, I'm just going from Genesis to Revelation and thinking about every miracle that I can remember. And every miracle has a matter that each one of us should know. Some of things, you know, we know already, right? Blind man, blind Bertimaeus calling, and we heard so many times, you know, you call on the name of the Lord. He will stop no matter what, and he will help you with it. And we have read about, you know, Jesus feeding 5,000. We know how God, you know, the matter is that God multiplied so little for so big a large crowd. And you go on and on and on, and water turned into wine. God is going to turn your life into a beautiful, wonderful future, no matter what you're going through now. And so you can go on and on and on, and you can bring out a matter, and you can apply that to your life and situation, whatever it's you're going through. And so this morning, as we look at this chapter, 1 Kings chapter 17, I'm going to go through uh, all the three stories, to be honest. But I want us to know that Elijah comes into a picture and in a very chaotic, uh, you know, times of south and northern kingdom. And there was so much of apostasy going on. And King Ahab and his wife are completely against, you know, all that God was doing. And prophets of God, Almighty Yahweh God. And small g, God. Baal was, you know, highly lifted up in the Baal worshippers and... And, uh, you know, Baal-related uh, 
and temples are raised everywhere and put on all the idols everywhere and they were insisting that everyone must worship and follow the order, orders of this evil king Ahab and you read you know from 17th through 19th you will see very busy schedule for Elijah but he'll come into this picture where this is where you see him that he comes and he starts off with you know proclaiming the message to you know to uh, uh, the citizens or the people of Gilead now Elijah was a Tishbite and he was called by God and he comes to Gilead and he says verse 1 he talks about that as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. We know this verse is even quoted in James chapter 5. And there are a few scriptures where it was also taken the name of Elijah in New Testament. But I want to bring our attention to these three miracles that happened. And I want us to get some matter out of it. That so many of us experience miracles, right? Right now, even as I speak, all of you all are reminding yourself what miracle God did in my life or what I have experienced supernaturally in my life. And so I want to categorize this into uh, for a miracle whether is it frozen or there it is so I want to categorize first story seven verses we are going to go uh, verse by verse mini miracle so many times if you are you know just got hidden by a car and just a scratch on your bumper or something we automatically grade that into a mini miracle God saved me, thank God, just a small scratch on the car, nothing happened to us. We categorize miracles into sizes. But I want to tell you this morning that we serve a one God. There is no size of a God. And that God has same amount of power to deal with a, a tiny miracle to the largest miracle you want to talk about. We are believing for someone to be healed from a wound or from a fever and we are believing for someone to get blessed with a huge life and death matter. I want to, you know, us to come out of that mindset where you disregard the things that God is doing at the lower level and give credit to the top things, big stuff. I bought a house, I bought a car or, you know, we got this done, we got that done. Those are all like full high graded, but whereas you see some of the miracles that are at the lower place, we don't even get to give a credit. And that's exactly what I believe Elijah was uh, trying to teach here in the 17th chapter. Verses 1 through 7, seven verses talk about Elijah delivering a message to the people of Gilead. He goes and he says that there is not going to be any rain or dew until I come back and speak to you. That's the message he is giving to the king, he is giving to the people. There's nothing said from God to Elijah. God asked him, go Elijah and say this message out. And he goes and he proclaims the message. A mini miracle, seven verses. God led Elijah one step at a time. We are going to go verse by verse. God led Elijah one step at a time. How many of us are in rush? I am in rush, big time rush. I want to see God to just jump out there and do things that I am waiting for him to do. I'm at a bigger loss. I am in a crisis. I am crying. I am waiting. I am putting everything I have in front of God. I'm asking God, just, I don't know what is going to happen, second verse. You know, we have the Bible, Elijah did not. 
Elijah was just asked to go and proclaim the message, and he goes and proclaims. I want to tell if anyone, any one of us in rush today, any one of us, you know, eager to see God doing his work in our life, I want to tell you that God is going to do one step at a time. But meanwhile, we must do what we need to do. I love this week, one of, one of the nights when we were on the, in a call that just made me cry, that Nancy account, I asked her to close the prayer line, and you know, we are all praying for Pastor Andrew, and she started thanking about the person who's going to, who we do not know who it is going to be, but she started off thanking God about that person. And she started speaking the words of faith into that person. She started speaking the trust of God into the situation. I'm telling you, if you're in a mode of rush, we understand. We all of us want it to be happen now. While others, it's going on. You get tempted to, you know, it to happen to you too. We understand. But I want to tell you, if you're in a rush, the best way to put that out, rush, is by opening and thanking God by your mouth and heart, through your mouth and heart. Verse 2, if you read, I hope you have your Bibles. I'm going to read from Bible. The verse 2, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook, Carrot, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be thou that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to and stayed by the brook Kareth, which flows into the Jordan. And ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Remember, God led Elijah one step at a time. God gave a first message to take it to the people. And the second message comes in very detail and specific for Elijah now. Elijah had no idea. God asks him to now get away from this situation to a place where I'm going to take you. Where is he taking him? He is taking him to the eastward and hide by the brook called Kareth. I want to talk about this brook, Kareth specifically. There are so many details you can talk, but I just picked three out of the 17th chapter. Brook Kereth, in Hebrew meaning, be separated or cut off from. That word, if you look in the Hebrew, Kereth means be separated or cut off from. While all the mess was going on in Gilead, people are experiencing water scarcity. No crops are coming up. Animals are dying. The entire town in chaos. Remember, like I think a week ago, we went out to buy some stuff and all the shelves were empty. I did not know there was something going on and everybody went wild. And all the stores were empty. A scarcity will scare you. Any scarcity you take, it will scare you. And Elijah was guided by the Lord to get away, to see the provision of God in his life. God has a specific way to deal with our rush. As much as we are in rush for God to do things in our life, I want to tell us, myself and to you, that God will surely ask you to get yourself away from the things that can bother you. That can take you away from what God has. That can distract you. That can make you negative comments about the situation. I have no idea what Elijah might have said. Elijah, now you're part of this land here. I'm bringing three and a half years. Draw to the land. They have no idea. But Elijah 
doctor just did what he needs to do and God separated him from that I have no idea if he has spoken any negativity over the situation why God why you have to do this to me why I have to go through this at this age at this time I am looking forward for something else and drought comes in we have no idea but God asked him to get away get away and Elijah goes to the brook and evening and morning he's eating he's enjoying his life and Elijah finds verse 7 let's read from the Bible if you have your word let us look at the Bible verse 7 and it happened after a while can everybody say after a while and it happened after a while good God Almighty led Elijah to go enjoy fresh waters right whatever water brand water he was enjoying the water morning and evening he's enjoying the bread and the meat and after a while it happened so what happened the brook the river or the flowing waters completely stopped I want to tell you this morning you know God elected us chose us not to rush things in our life be encouraged that he takes one step at a time that's why I said this man of God who wrote that if you are in the university of faith your insecurities are the only way God is going to let his miracle come through in your life only insecurities Your finances will get dry at a point. You will have to face sickness. You will have to see, you know, relationships and friendships getting away because of whatever the reason. You will see the hurt because of whatever reasons. The dryness will hit you slowly at some point. How are you? Are you going to stick and stand strong by looking at the face of God. Let's see, Psalm chapter 91. You know, when God said, Elijah, I want you to go and hide yourself. Hide yourself. In some other translation, it says, hide yourselves at the carrot, and he goes and hides. The word of God talks very clearly about he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadows of the Almighty. You know, I was thinking that, you know, God must have kept him away from seeing all the chaos that was going on around him. And today you get on the social media, you get to see all bad, good, and ugly. The social media can get you, you know, away from God into a mess that you don't want to be. And that's exactly why you need a place to hide yourself. That's exactly why, why we need a place, a secret place that God is talking about. Where we experience the peace, where we experience God's joy, where we experience God's breakthroughs, where we hear God speaking to us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 4 and part B. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. While he takes one step at a time with your life and he wants to lead you, that's the season of your life you want to go into the secret place for you to see God rewarding openly. Matthew chapter, same, same chapter, verse 6, part B. Pray to your father who is in secret place and your father who sees in secret place reward you openly secret place I'm telling you the rush that we face and the stress we face we can only get away from that when we spend time in secret place you get to hear God what he is saying I'm telling you I'm honestly saying that you know in we have right now that we've been spending time in the secret place asking God God direct us lead us guide us, our family, our children, church, 
secret place. I'm telling you, I think, you know, some of you have seen Pastor Face this week. You know, I've been constantly in touch with him. He is visiting people, families, praying for them. We were out there in Denton looking for a place, praying for the spot. Busy, 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 busy. And you have to get into that mode. God, not just my pastor have to come. I want to see myself spending time with you in the secret place so that I get to hear you. Here in the secret place makes a difference in your life. So many miracles, even with the many miracles, God takes one step at a time. He doesn't do abracadabra, done, go brother. No. Abracadabra is not for us. God takes one step at a time and he does what he wants to do with our life. Medium miracles. So after a while, the brook dried and Elijah, looking around his you know, surroundings and he is thought, you know, God was leading him, God was with him, and the brook dries, and chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, we read again about a medium-sized miracle, small, mini, and medium-sized miracle, that is, God fed Elijah at every step. God fed Elijah at every step. I'm not just talking about the physical food. But every aspect of your life must be fed by God. We see verses 8 through 16, a story that is about this widow who has the last meal to eat and die with her son. And God is speaking to Elijah in verse 18. I mean, verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. God does not only just lead you, but God also will feed you. He will not leave you abandoned. Until you get to where you're supposed to, he will take care of you. Amen? Amen? Until you fulfill his purpose, he will provide. I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about just, you know, anything in specific. But everything in your life that needs to happen, God will feed that into you so that we fulfill the purpose of God. Elijah sits there, water is out, the birds are no more coming back, and now he is looking up and down, and God speaks to him. And he says, I have already spoken to a widow. You just have to travel from here to the Zarephath. Remember, God will take you from one place to another place to see a provision. What I have learned from this story is that, that, you know, I want to keep every possible negativity out of my life that I think, man, what happened to me is bad. Anybody feel that anytime something happens to you? If you're not feeling, that's fine. That's good. But I feel sometimes what happened to me is bad. But I want to tell you that every miracle is orchestrated by God. Hallelujah. We are on a journey and God wants us to hop on and hop out and then get you know, caught up to the next shuttle so that you are on to the next, you know, whatever God has for you. And Elijah thought, you know, my life is settled here. I'm going to enjoy this. But within one week, everything gone. And Elijah waiting there. Now God is saying that I'm going to take care of you. I already spoke to the widow there. Go and you will be taken care. So he goes 
and the lady, the widow with her son, she was picking sticks outside the city. That describes how poor she lost. Maybe she lost everything. There was absolutely nothing. Small bowl of uh, flour and a few ounces of oil is what she has. But Elijah goes and knocks at her door and he says, I mean, he sees her there and he says, bring me water, a cup of water to drink. And as she goes to the door, he yells at her, sister, please also bring me a, bread, a piece of bread to eat. And she says that I do not have anything to eat or anything to give you. I, what I have is very little and I'm going to prepare for me and for my son. We are going to eat and die. And he says that, bring me the bread. And he says, as you do that, until again I command for the water and the dew to come to the land, you will never lack that flour run out of the bowl or the oil. And the word of Elijah, she does it. And Elijah ate, she ate, her son ate. Maybe the entire family might have come back by then because everybody heard that she is doing better with the food and she has everything in the house. They have all ate. They were all full. That's the story. But what I want to highlight is that God fed Elijah at every step. What I want to highlight is that verse 4 and 6 I want to read. Please look at your Bible. There are verses 4, verse 4. It says, And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you. I want to highlight all this because these are the details I want to mention to as a body of Christ. You know, ravens are the second class of vultures. Ravens considered to be unholy unclean birds. They are not supposed to be anywhere close by a prophet of Yahweh. But God commanded ravens to bring bread and meat to Elijah morning and evening. Brothers and sisters, ravens, an unclean bird brought food to prophet of God who is set apart to do the work of God who should not be touching meat that are brought by ravens. If you paid attention, vultures eat the dead meat. So do the ravens. They eat the dead meat. And these ravens are bringing food to Elijah morning and evening. The point I want to make is God will use anybody and everyone in your life if he needs to do a miracle in your life. Hallelujah. You can't be just saying, I want only Christian doctor. I want only the nurse who goes to the church and who does the work of God, who prays and who believes. God can use anyone in your life to do a miracle. And he does not just do it for one time. Remember, manna came to his people morning and evening. These ravens brought food to Elijah, the provision. He was fed morning and evening. I have no idea where your resource have to come from. I don't know who is going to be your blessing. I don't know where you're going to find your answer from. But I believe wherever and however it is, God is going to use whatever it takes for you to see that provision come in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he used a lady who is in Zarephath. Now, Zarephath is a place, completely a pagan city, who are worshipping Baal. They're filled with all kinds of priests and high places that are doing everything against God, Yahweh. There, Elijah goes and gets fed by this lady. And they ate full until the end of the time. I want to remind that 
If you want to see the provision of God, see what God did for Elijah. God fed Elijah at every step. The word of God says, Psalm chapter 34, 34 5, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I want to encourage, look to him. Find a secret spot. Look to him. Look to him. Look to him. Look to him so that you will not be put to shame. You will not be ashamed of looking at him. You will not be given to any discouragement or failure when we look unto him. Psalm chapter 34 verse 10. The lions may grow weary and hungry but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The lions may grow weary and hungry but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. I believe this is talking because how skilled lions are to hunt. You can't miss. They will not miss if they decided to hunt. But there are some animals, they ran, uh, they run faster than lion and they escape. And they go hungry if they miss their hunt. And the word of God says that but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. What is that good provision that you're looking for? If God gives us an assurance that God provided for Elijah at the brook, but there come a time where the brook dried out, but God shows his faithfulness to provide by sending him even into the land where it is not God's land, and he provides through the ravens. He provides through a widow. And he provides until the end of that story, which we think this is just a, a medium-sized miracle. But even in the medium-sized miracles, God takes his pleasure to provide for his children when we seek him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes we talk about mega miracles in our life. The last miracle I want to talk about and as we talk about mega miracles, you know, you name it. You know what they are in your life. The big stuff. The things that happen to you. The things that you mark as milestones in your life. I don't know about you, but I write and draw pictures of big miracles that God does in my life, in our family. Do you have miracles in your life? But we have the same God who does mega miracles. And so the last miracle is, even though we name it as a mega miracles, but I want you to know, God used Elijah in to mega. God led, God fed, and God used. If God leads you and God feeds you with his provision, and God wants to get something out of it. All of us know this. If God leads you and God provides out, God fed, God fed you and God wants to use you. And so here in the chapter 17 verses 17 through 24, all of a sudden one morning a loud cry comes out of this, you know, room below Elijah. The lady was crying out loud and Elijah comes down and he sees her son died. And the lady blames Elijah about, look what you have done. Is this the reason why you have come? Is this is what you wanted to happen to me? And the lady goes on and on and on. And Elijah takes this dead body to the upper room where he was, the room where he was, and he takes and he lays on this boy and he prays three times and the boy comes back to life and he brings 
down from the upper room and he hand over him to his mother and 24th verse let's read the last verse of the chapter 24 then the women said to Elijah now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true and the story ends there but I want to highlight here this particular story that you know Elijah got he was led by the Lord and he was fed by the Lord and now a mega miracle where he was used by God to perform this miracle I was just thinking what was the need for this all of a sudden death in the family she was a widow lost her husband me she had no income to be honest with you. she was literally living with whatever the little income that was coming or whatever she had saved she was using and living and all of a sudden her only son died I do not know nobody explains why or there could have been some reasons that theologian theologians can give but what I believe is we read verse 24 she says looking at Elijah and the son who is standing she says now I know you are the what did she say true man of God servant of the Lord most high and the word that came out of your mouth is true let us go back to read verse 8 I'm just thinking this is the reason that the word of the Lord came to him saying arise go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there see I have commanded a widow there to provide for you I'm about to close God spoke to this widow already what did he speak to her God spoke to her there's going to be a man who is going to come you're not going to die nothing is going to happen to you you know you just honor him by giving water and bread it's my imagination okay God spoke to her it's not in the Bible God spoke to her but she was caught up with her situation so much she never paid attention God was speaking to her she was in her life of losing her husband now everything is going wrong in her life no job you know the little saving that she has gonna go away and she does not know even there's going to be any you know social security going to come in she was you know fully into that mess that all that is around her and she did not listen to what God was speaking to her I want to leave two points out of this last story she did not hear what God spoke to her verse 9 says that God spoke to her she did not hear but God has to take her to the next level of miracle she already experienced the miracle by eating a wonderful fresh manna every day the the bread and the oil never ran out she was eating out of it but God wants her to experience the next level of miracle in her life and I believe because she missed out on what God was speaking to her and she do not know who was doing the miracle in the house and she has to go through this loss of her son and 24th verse says that now I know that you are the true servant of the Lord most high and every word you spoke is true now I know sometime I'm telling you that you face a situation in your life and God has to direct you to see the true revelation of God and that true revelation will come only sometime when you see 
the resurrection happened. Resurrection happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you this morning, if, you know, we are getting used by God, if God wants us to be into his use and do what he wants us to do, and I want to encourage this morning that God will lead you through. God will provide for you. God will, you know, put everything in place for you to do and get used for his kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 And Elijah goes on and on and on, even in chapter 18 and 19. He continued to see God using him hereafter and God doing great and mighty things in the land of drought and scarcity. And he was going and doing exactly what God was asking him to do. And if anyone here or online listening to us, the top of the miracle of all these miracles is resurrection of this boy that stands as the most mesmerizing miracle for this family and the entire town. And I want to tell you this morning, there is a miracle that God did to save us and set us free and redeem us from our sin and from this world and from the things to come. That miracle is Jesus himself resurrecting from the grave. And there is a purpose why that is in place is that to give us the assurance that he is going to come back. And until then, we must be led by the Lord. Until then, we must receive all the provision and get fed to do what has called us. Church, this morning as I leave my thoughts, may I ask you to step to your feet and as we close in, I want all of us to read this passage together from the letter to Philippians chapter 3 verses 19 I mean uh, verses 17 through 21. Shall we read it together this morning? Let us read it together. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. This morning, I encourage from these three miracles that we see as mini, medium, and mega. But the same God is able to lead us, fed us, and use us. Be led by God and his spirit. Be fed by God and his word. And be used by God and for God alone. Shall we close our eyes in prayer this morning? God Almighty, we want to thank you this morning. God, we thank you for the wonderful miracles that you do in our life. All the miracles we have experienced in our life. There is a unique story to tell. Along with that of Father, this morning we see Father story of Elijah from 1st King chapter 17. These three miracles of God have a matter
to deliver to us that God, you lead us. No matter what is going on, no matter what we are facing, God, you are going to lead us. As children of yours, blood bought, set apart, called by you, God, you're going to lead us. And Lord, not only that, Father God, you're going to feed us. You're going to provide no matter what scarcities that are going on around us, oh Lord. Not only that, God, but God, when you lead and when you feed, you want to, us to be used by you. And this morning, Father, we thank you that encouraging us. And Father, we this morning say that we want to be led, we want to be fed, and we want to be used, oh God. Father, may we, Father Lord, continue to see uh, a new level of re revelation of you and what you are about to do in our life, God. Father, you see us where we are exactly in life, and we believe strongly, Father God, that you are not done with us yet, but bring us to the mini to the mega and use us all for your glory, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus, this morning for this wonderful opportunity and helping us to be in your house, to worship and to give and hear from you. We thank you and bless us all here and online. In Jesus' name, amen. As pastor comes forward, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the one who called you is faithful. And now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, we say, Amen. Thank you so much for being here. It's so nice to see you all. May the Lord be with you. Let's go in peace. May the Lord God Almighty be with you Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday again. May you experience favor of God. May you walk in the light. May all the mountains be leveled for you. May you walk in the newness of life. May you walk in the holiness of God. May God answer you from Zion. May you be the lighthouse wherever you go. May the Lord surround you with favor. Go ahead and let your light shine. God be the glory. Shalom from the lighthouse church. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you Pastor Tim for a wonderful message.